Use your favorite automotive car wax as a mold release and thoroughly coat all of the parts of the mold. Put a mark on the edges of the parts. This way you'll know how it goes together later on. Carefully lay out the fiberglass cloth, then roughly cut a square piece that fits the base of the mold. Then cut a circular piece which will fit inside the mold cavity. The square piece of fiberglass cloth then gets sandwiched in between the base and the center section of the mold. Secure the parts together with the screws provided. Then make openings through the fabric for each of the bolt holes. Install all of the bolts and washers and now the mold is ready for casting. The coils need to be cleaned from all oils and contaminants. Most of this is from the soldering process. Use an evaporating solvent and wire brush to clean everything up. Now we can set the coil assembly inside the mold. Secure the terminal buttons in place through the screw holes that we drilled previously. Our stator casting resin is a special two-part epoxy that features an extended pot life, thin viscosity, and low odor. It mixes in a 3 to 1 ratio, which is easily done with the convenient dispensing pumps. Pour some of the resin over the coils. Then carefully work the resin into the fiberglass cloth, making sure that it's fully saturated, and remove as many air pockets as possible. Our resin casting system makes it easy to mix the resin as it's needed. This helps eliminate any waste. Lay the circular piece of fiberglass cloth over the coils and continue to work it into the resin. At this point, it is not important to fill the mold all the way to the top, but do try to work out as many air pockets as possible. Then put the cover on the mold and tighten all the bolts. It's normal for resin to start squeezing out through the edges. Incline the mold with the filler hole at the top and gently tap on it to help release any remaining air bubbles still trapped inside. Add more resin as needed and repeat this process several times until all of the air bubbles have been removed. Then let it sit so the resin can cure. After the resin has cured for a day or two, Remove all of the bolts from the mold, then carefully open it up.
After the stator has been removed, carefully trim the edges. Carefully cut through the fiberglass and remove the center core. Remove all of the tape and clean the edges with sandpaper. Then scrape the fiberglass off of the terminal buttons and clean these with sandpaper as well. Wow, this stator turned out really nice and I'm sure that yours will too. In the next video, we're going to build the rotors and that will complete our alternator. I hope this has been helpful and thank you for watching. The rotor assembly is probably the easiest part in building a permanent magnet axial flux alternator. However, there are a few procedures in doing this that might be a little tricky or even hazardous, and we're going to try and cover some of those details in this video. We also have additional comments and suggestions in the tutorial section on our website, so feel free to visit there for that information. So let's get started. The rotor assembly of an axial flux alternator should be based on two steel discs with magnets. The steel discs capture magnetic flux that would normally be unused and concentrates it in the field between two opposite magnetic poles. The magnets are arranged in a north-south, north-south pattern around the circumference of the discs. When the discs are assembled, opposite poles face each other. This structure manipulates the magnetic field to direct the maximum amount of energy through the coils of the stator. Our 9-inch rotor kits include two steel discs with an aluminum spacer. We machine the spacers on state-of-the-art CNC machinery. The discs are precisely laser cut. They have indicator notches every 30 degrees on the circumference to be used as an alignment guide when setting the magnets. On a clean workbench, gather the needed shop supplies such as safety glasses, acetone, a degreaser, rags, epoxy, and so on. Clean the disc to remove any dirt and oil from the surface. Wear gloves so that the oils from your hands won't transfer to the disc. Follow the instructions provided with the epoxy for surface.